feed the beasts. Ankle deep in blood, gristle and bone. Shovel in hand, slogging through Lucifer's mosh pit. It's a good what? Night? Day? In this hell, in whatever godforsaken existence, there is just time. Unending, infinitive time. The blood must flow. Humanity hasn't a clue about the true nature of good and evil, the nature of the beast and its hunger. The shovel is a spoon that feeds the beast, the insatiable bitch, her mouth a toothy cunt shredding the intercourse of mankind, tearing the flesh and pulverizing the bone. Thomas, Thomas, wake up, you're having a bad dream. Slick with sleep sweat, Thomas opens his eyes to see the bedside clock. It's almost four in the morning. Grinning, he swings his feet over the edge of the mattress. His wife is annoyed again. Thomas, look at these sheets. They're soaked. Baby, Thomas replies, that's nightmare cream. The life juice that someday will pay our rent. Just be thankful and wash them. Up and out of bed, off to the bathroom to drain the morning wood. Splash some water on his face and wipe the Sandman's boogers out of his eyes. Thomas is feeling good. Grabbing a Pepsi out of the fridge and playfully swinging his foot at the house cat. Wanna play kick the kitty? Bandit, being a feline of personality, swings a paw but misses his blunt attack on purpose. She knows who feeds her and is a gracious kitten. Thomas heads for his home office to log on to his computer check the email, catch up on current events and news on his favorite blogs, and then maybe his muse will want to write. Not quite ready to bring up his writing program yet, he looks back over the news. Wars, natural disasters, and senseless, unexplained violence. Hell will be busy today, but then hell is busy every day. There isn't much good news reported. Heaven can wait. It's blood and circuses that feeds the beast of the reading public. Insatiable bastards. Clicking on the writing program, Thomas wonders in thought. What will it be this morning? A light or a dark theme for his muse? Poetry? Perhaps a short story? Setting his font on Times New Roman 18 point font for easy reading and writing, he stares at a blank white screen. Reaching for the keyboard, his fingers hunt. Civilized demon. Grotesque, hideous, and homely. Yet with top hat and cane, not unhandsome. Roughly ordering dichotomy tea. And slurping mischievously, whilst iron sidewalk souls sidestep the curb by his cafe table. Black cat hottie. Saunters, no. With predator's confidence, feline indifference strolls casually by his chair. This is a real cat's meow. A gnarled, pestilent finger, drawn from a milk saucer, offered innocently. Here, kitty kitty. Curious fur and whiskers twitch to lap the oozing green sustenance. It's a beautiful April morning. Today, be civilized. Tomorrow, your lunch! Looking down at his ashtray full of cigarette butts, unsatisfied with his first effort of the morning, he dumps the ashtray's contents into the wastebasket and lights another coffin there. Another insatiable bastard. This beast must be fed constantly, killing himself for cool. Staring at a blank screen again, munching on a strawberry pop-tart, Mind at idle, drifting in thought, his wife snuggled safely in the bedroom. A darkness, first just a shadow and peripheral vision, growing stronger, fading his senses to black. The machinery is simple, metal tines interlock and winding together, feed the bodies into this maw and they get ground up and spit out the other end. First it was the growling and clunking resonance of the machine that broke his slumber, but it was the splatter of blood and gristle on his face that fully awakened him. You have a nightmare, Tommy boy! The demon reached down and plucked an eyeball out of the muck as he spoke and popped it into his mouth, 
slurping the tendrils of nerve endings like spaghetti pasta. Break time's over, shit for brains. Lucifer's bitch hungry. Grab your shovel and go feed that cunt, or I'll personally feed on your intestines. Grinning, Thomas swings his shovel, his hand deftly on the handle, forcing the blade to the demon's throat, pinning it to the machine's metal backplate, applying pressure with no malice or anger, but with pleasure. He could feel the neck bone crunch in two. Sliding the blade side to side with the confidence of experience, the demon's leathery skin is fully severed. Its head popped off and Thomas batted it into the hopper with a smooth motion. As the demon's body glopped into the muck, you could hear its head bouncing around in the metal tines. Look at you now, demon, Thomas exclaims. Groveling at my feet, and you with no head, I should pull it out of the hopper and feel the warmth of your brain squishing between my toes. Thomas is fully smiling now and refreshed. Sometimes it's the littlest things that provides the soul the nourishment it needs. <laughs> From the very gore of existence, and in every cavern of hell, every demon and lost soul can hear the master when he speaks. Insatiable bastard. Yes, master, Thomas replies. You are very tall, sir, Thomas. I like no more as precious as I can feed your beast. My bitch is hungry. Now feed mine! It was just a fraction of a moment. The teeniest little bit of daymare. The beast within Thomas was fed, and it was good. Nearly satisfying. A little taste of heaven is better than none at all. But reality must be acknowledged. Thomas is in hell. Satisfaction is a fantasy. With vigor and renewed spirit, Thomas picks up his shovel and slogs through the blood and the gore to the insatiable bitch that she is. He will feed the beast, so his beast will be fed. Lucifer knows the appetite of man, the insatiable bastards. <laughs>